I went to visit Vienna and in this video I show you 50 things to do when you're in Vienna. Here at the heart of Vienna is the famous Stefan's Dome, also called the Steffi, with the beautiful tiled roof on the top. It's a landmark of Vienna. The Stefan's Dome is a Roman Catholic cathedral and it's one of the most important Gothic structures in Austria, built and dedicated to Saint Stephen. The foundation stone dates from 1137. That original 12th century church was destroyed by fire. Only the main entrance, called the Giant's Gate, and the hidden towers remain. The large nave leads to the main altar and the main facade. To the left of the main altar is the Wiener Neustadter altar from 1447, depicting scenes from the life of the Virgin Mary. You can enter for free, but you can also buy tickets to see all the sites in the church, such as the catacombs, the south tower, the north tower and the treasury. I went up the north tour of the Stephens Dome. It is 6 euros. You take the elevator and the platform is at about 50 meters high. The North Tower is also called Adler Turm, which means Eagle Tower. From the North Tower platform, you can get a bird's eye view of the city. The roof is made of 230,000 glazed tiles of different colors that form different mosaics and patterns. These eagles carry the coats of arms of the city of Vienna and of the Republic of Austria. The North Tower houses the largest bell in the Stephens Dome, called the Pomerin. This is the first place where we are going to eat. We're going to eat schnitzel. Vegan Müller belongs to Lucek and they're known to have one of the best schnitzel in Vienna. My friend is going to eat a Kalb schnitzel and I am going to eat the vegan schnitzel. So let's try it out, see how it tastes. Let's go. Ich liebe vegan schnitzel. This place is so cozy and when we came in they asked if we had reservation because people made reservations but of course we don't have it and still we got this place so we are going to eat the schnitzel. Ah, thank you. The special thing of the lunch is the Fili Müller made of pork. So you get the bonita field salad. Yes. The traditional one is very good. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> There we go. Hibiscus lemonade. Hibiscus means limonade. Prost! Now it's time for the tasting. How do you think it tastes? I thought it would be sweeter. Yeah. It's more bitter. But I'm thirsty anyway. And uh, But I ex expected something else. Maybe a schnitzel from Lille. Vegan schnitzel. Very crunchy. Flat schnitzel. This is how it looks inside. How does it taste? Mm -hmm. This is with the cranberry. Yeah, delicious. I think it's good too, especially also with the sauce. And you have to make it a little bit more juicy with the lemon, otherwise, it can be a bit dry. So, even if you're vegan, you can also eat schnitzel. We arrived now at our room. We ate a little bit first because check in is at 3 o'clock. If you want to go inside, you have to type in a code again, and then I will show you the room. The kitchen has a stove, electric kettle, a coffee maker, a refrigerator, a dishwasher and a microwave. The bathroom has a rain shower, three toiletries, a hairdryer, toilet and toilet paper. The interior of this apartment is trendy and colorful with an extra large double bed, a dining area and a balcony with a view over the rooftops of the city. It's time for some tea. Oh, look what's here. We have some Vienna specialties, some sweetness. And this is the Zinschrecken, this is with cinnamon. And that's the Krepken. That's also like a Berliner ball or Vienna ball. And that's with peach marmalade inside it. So yummy, yummy, yummy on the balcony. Mm, with some tea. There is a Shaolin Centrum here in Vienna. And we are on our way. We are going to take the U-Bahn. We have to go to Bacherplatz, that's where the Shaolin school is. Maybe I want to do one training. From here it's like 25 minutes with the U-Bahn. We are at Schwedenplatz and we have to take the U4 that goes to Hütteldorf. This is where I have to walk tomorrow. <laughs> this is where I have to walk. It's not really a cozy touristic place to walk, but luckily there are a lot of people here, but it's not really a nice place to walk. I arrived here at Bacherplatz. It was a bit of a walk in a weirdo area. So now we're going to go inside the Shaolin Schule. Shaolin Temple Österreich. Hold 
once we hold time to eat, we're going to eat here together. Some Asian food. <laughs> this is tofu with cashew. And you have salmon? Yeah, yeah it's got a bit short uh, of Yeah, what's your rice called? What was the name of your rice? Kuro. Good morning. I'm here in front of the Shaolin School in Österreich, Shaolin Temple, Österreich. At 10 o'clock there's some Qigong and I'm going to train with them and do some Qigong. I finished with training. I did two training. I did some Qigong and Kung Fu because uh, I was going to do one but I couldn't stop so I did two lessons. So from 10 till 12. So now I'm going to our apartment. We're going to make pictures and we're going to see the rest of Vienna. The Shaolin, the Kung Fu, it was awesome. I'm really happy that I went to the Shaolin Shula. Oh, I'm coming back home and we are going to have some spring rolls. Look how beautiful. And with some chocolate milk. This is our lunch on the balcony. We are on our way to Schloss Schönbrunn. We are going to walk to Schloss Schönbrunn and we are going to walk in this park. This is the palace garden of Schönbrunn. Schloss Schönbrunn. We are at Schloss Schönbrunn. The history of Schönbrunn Palace dates back to the 14th century when it was used as a hunting lodge. In 1569, it became part of the Habsburg properties. According to legend, Emperor Matthias named the estate Schönbrunn after discovering a Schönerbrunnen, meaning beautiful spring. In 1688, Emperor Leopold I commissioned Baroque architect Johann Bernard Fischer von Erlach to design an imperial palace that would rival the Palace of Versailles in France. The palace was built from 1696 to 1711 and consists of 1441 rooms of which you can visit a very small selection. Emperor Charles VI inherited the palace and gave it to his daughter Empress Maria Theresa in 1721. The Empress had the palace completely renovated under the direction of architect Nicolaus Bacassi. Most of the current design and grounds of Schönbrunn Palace date from this period. While exploring Schloss Schönbrunn, we are going to walk in the palace garden. Schönbrunn Palace and its garden were listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1996. Inclusion in this list confirms the importance of the palace and its garden as a unique Baroque ensemble. The Palm House, a gigantic tropical greenhouse, was built in 1882 by order of Emperor Franz Joseph I. It is one of the largest palm houses in the world, with exotic plants, trees and butterflies from all over the world. Here's an artificial Roman ruin built in 1778. The Roman ruin at the foot of the wooded slopes of Schönbrunn Hill was originally called the Ruin of Carthage. The Roman ruin was built for Empress Maria Theresa by architect Johann Ferdinand Hetzendorf von Homburg. The ruin is an imitation of the real ruins of the Temple of Vespasian and Titus in Rome, which was built in the first century. In front of a large arch is a basin with two statues in the middle. With their jars, they symbolize the river gods of the Voltava and Elbe. This is the Neptune fountain, with in the middle you see Neptune in his shell. The Neptune Brunnen or Neptune fountain at the front of the palace was completed in 1780, a few months before the death of Empress Maria Theresa. We are going to walk upstairs now to have a better view on Schloss Schönbrunn. At the top of the hill is the Gloriat building built in 1775 overlooking the garden and Schönbrunn Palace. It's so nice here up the hill. A lot of people and still it's quiet. We are going to take a little break. We have this pretzel. We're going to eat this pretzel here up the hill and enjoy the view. Ooh. Public Matters is a contemporary art exhibition at the Belvedere Garden from May to October 1st, 2023. The 300th anniversary of the completion of the Upper Belvedere is a great opportunity for the Belvedere to put contemporary in art in the spotlight of its anniversary. France West's three-part sculptural installation fires up to 10 meters high. 
The Belvedere is a Baroque palace complex built by architect Johann Lucas von Hildebrand as a summer residence for the military commander Prince Eugene of Savoy. It consists of the Upper Belvedere, completed in 1723, and the somewhat older Lower Belvedere, built in 1716, which are connected by a garden. Eight years after Prince Eugene's death, Empress Maria Theresa bought the Belvedere Palace and turned the Upper Belvedere into a picture gallery for the Imperial Collection, making it one of the first public museums in the world. The gardens of Belvedere Palace are considered one of the most beautiful Baroque gardens in Europe and are a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The Botanical Garden of the University of Vienna was created in 1754 by Empress Maria Theresa after her personal physician, the Dutch physician Gerard van Sweeten, suggested planting medicinal herbs. The Botanical Garden was opened to the public in the 19th century and is now an independent department of the University of Vienna. It offers thousands of species of plants from different continents combined with informative descriptions. Many of them are still studied by academics and used for student education. We are going to Hundertwasser House. So now we're going to find our way here to Hundertwasser House. And we bought these beautiful flowers. This is the Hundertwasser House. Hundertwasser House is a residential complex designed by artist Friedensreich Hundertwasser, built between 1983 and 1985. The original architectural style of the Hundertwasser House, with its curved lines, colorful facades, and mosaic tiles is very different from that of historic Vienna, with its baroque palaces and large squares. Hundertwasser House is one of Vienna's most unique architectural works. In the Hundertwasser village, there are several small shops, an art gallery and a bar. We are going to eat at the 12 Apostle. We are going to eat original Viennese food. Very cozy restaurant in a vault downstairs. And the funny part is it's in the street of our apartment in Sumsalgasse number three. So let's try it out. Now oh, it's 12 Apostles and this is our seat and we're going to take place here. Look at this cute place. It's so awesome. We should have made reservations but we didn't make reservations until we have this place, so we're very lucky and we are going to eat here at 12 Apostle. Everything in this place is Viennese. We are going to have the classic menu with sliced pancakes, Viennese table sweets, that's boiled beef, grated potatoes and garnish, and curd cheese strudel with vanilla ice. This red wine is the Zweigold Markovic. Prost! It's very good wine, very tasty, deep, Delicious taste. Yeah. You should drink this. It tastes really good before you start with eating. Very beautiful day today and we are going to explore this area. We're going to the Hofburg Palace, but also look around here. So come. This is the Fox Theater. As it says, it's a theater for the people. I heard there was a great opera here and not that expensive. We wanted to go, but we are leaving tomorrow and the only opportunity was a concert for tomorrow, so we couldn't come. But we heard it's very good. If you're here, go to the Fox Theater. I'm now going inside the museum quarter. The museum quarter is one of the largest art and culture areas in the world, with a history dating back to the 18th century. The museum quarter, designed by the famous Austrian architect Johann Bernhard Fischer von Erlach, was built in 1725 as Vienna's imperial horse stables. Today, the museum quarter is full of cultural institutions, courtyards, cafes and shops. This is the Dimmock. The Museum of Modern Art Ludwig Foundation Vienna contains one of the largest European collections of modern art. Here's the Leopold Museum. The Leopold Museum houses one of the largest collections of modern Austrian art collected over five decades by Austrian art collector Rudolf Leopold. Behind me is the Maria Theresienplatz with the Kunsthistorisch Museum und Naturhistorium Museum, but they both look like each other. 
to see which one is which. There you see Maria Theresia and her right hand is pointing to the Art Historic Museum. So that's one. The Kunsthistorisch Museum is the largest art museum in the country, opened by Emperor Franz Joseph I at the same time as the Symmetrical Naturhistorisch Museum. The museums house the extensive imperial art and natural history collections, from dinosaurs to ancient Egypt, collections of Renaissance and Baroque art, and much more. Unveiled in 1888 by Emperor Franz Joseph, the Maria Theresa Monument is one of the most important monuments of the Habsburg monarchy in Vienna. It pays homage to the reign of Empress Maria Theresa, who ruled the Habsburg monarchy from 1740 to 1780. So this is the Burgring, it's part of the Ringstrasse of Vienna. The Ringstrasse is a famous ring road, just over 5 kilometers long, that circles the city center. The Ringstrasse was built between 1857 and 1865 by order of Emperor Franz Joseph and is therefore the most historic street in Austria. We are going to the Hofburg, Vienna. The Hofburg was built in the 13th century as a modest city fortress that was expanded over the centuries to form the sprawling Hofburg Palace in the center of Vienna, the Ausrisburgtor, the outer gate of the Hofburg, started in 1821 based on a design by Luigi Cagnola and completed in 1824 by Petrol Nobil. The foundation stone was laid in the presence of Emperor Franz I in 1821. The opening ceremony took place on 16 October 1824, the 11th anniversary of the Battle of Leipzig, also known as the Battle of the Nations, in which the joint forces of Austria, Russia, Russia and Sweden defeated the Grand Armée of French Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte. Heldenplatz, Hero Square, is a historic square in front of the Hofburg Palace, built in the early 19th century by order of Emperor Franz Joseph. From the balcony of the Neue Burg, Adolf Hitler announced the Anschluss on Heldenplatz on March 15, 1938. The Leopold Wing was built in 1660 under Emperor Leopold I and is named after him. From 1946, the offices and staterooms of the President of Vienna have been located here for official occasions. Built in 1553 under Emperor Ferdinand I, the Renaissance Schweizer Tor or Swiss Gate is the oldest part of the Hofburg, named after the Swiss Guards who protected the Imperial Palace under Empress Maria Theresa. It features the coat of arms of Emperor Ferdinand I. The Schweizer Tor leads to the Schweizer Hof, which once formed the main part of the Hofburg, where you can find the entrance to the Kaiserliche Schatzkammer, which houses the Imperial Treasury, including the imperial crown, the globe, and the scepter of Austria. Joseph's Platz is a public square surrounded on three sides by the Hofburg Palace. In the center of Joseph's Platz stands an equestrian statue of Emperor Joseph II, built by sculptor Franz Anton von Zäuner between 1795 and 1807. Here's the National Library of Austria. The Austrian National Library is Europe's largest Baroque library, built between 1723 and 1737 by order of Emperor Charles VI. The most impressive library room is the Prunksaal or State Hall, where more than 200,000 historical books from between 1500 and 1850 stand on beautiful chestnut shelves guarded by giant mobile ladders. The Spanish Hofreitschule. The entrance is here at Michaela Platz, but you can also get in at Josef's Platz. The Spanish Hofreitschule, first mentioned in 1565, is one of the oldest riding schools in the world, dedicated to preserving the classic skills of horse riding. The Spanish Hofreitschule is named after the Spanish horses, the famous white lipizans, which are trained here in the Spanish riding school. In the morning, the Spanish Hofreitschule is open to the public, where you can watch the stallions train and perform with their riding. It is not allowed to take photos or videos during the training. During the training, the riders are wearing these training suits. Above the royal box is a portrait of Emperor Charles VI, to which the riders always salute before they ride. Now outside Hofreitschule, 
you'll see the horses walking around. We're here at the horse stable of the Lipizzaner horses. The Stahlberg, opposite the Spanish Hofreitschule, is a Renaissance-style building built from 1559 by order of Emperor Ferdinand I and is part of the Hofberg Palace. On the ground floor, this former residence housed the personal horses of the imperial family and then the famous Lipizzaners of the Spanish Hofreitschule. Between training sessions and performances, the Stahlberg is home to the White Stallions. This is the Michaela Kuppel, the entrance of the Hofburg Palace. The Michaela Truck, a Baroque building building with its curved facade and 50 meter high dome, the Michaela Kuppel, was designed by the famous Austrian architect Joseph Emanuel Fischer von Erlach in the 1720s, but was not built until more than a hundred years later and finally completed in 1893 by the Austrian architect Ferdinand Kirchner according to the original Baroque design. The Michaela Kuppel is the impressive gateway to the courtyard of the Hofburg Palace. The Lowe's house opposite the Michaela truck is the famous building from 1910, which illustrates the modernist aversion to historicism and the ornaments of the Vienna Secession. It's time for some dumplings. It looked so good in the window that we came in and that we ordered our own dumplings. The name of this place is Lau Lau. It's in the Herrengasse. It's our vinegar. Yeah. So your sauce, let's mix it up here together. And this is our homemade chili. Homemade with the sauce of my this is really delicious. We are going to have some Viennese cafe at Cafe Central. French taking the Amadeus, the double espresso with Mozart liqueur and white cream, and I'm taking the Maria Theresia, double espresso with orange liqueur and whipped cream. She's also taking Apfelstrudel with the vanilla sauce. Time to take my coffee. It's a Maria Theresa with orange liqueur and whipped cream. Usually I'm not a coffee drinker, but I like it. Wait. <laughs> this is good. With um, it's it's good with this, the orange taste. So with the liquor and the combination with the coffee, it's a very nice taste. And and this is a bit creamy on top, it's very creamy, so it's a good uh, combination. So you should definitely drink your coffee here. <laughs> so now we're here at the Stadt Opera and we're at the side of the stage door where the artists are going in. Unfortunately, we don't have time anymore. There are no concerts that we can visit. But if we had, we would go to a Vienna is surrounded by picturesque towns and villages and if you want to take a day trip outside of Vienna, Hallstatt is three and a half hours from Vienna. Hallstatt is a dreamy mountain town with beautiful waterfront homes and is considered by many to be Austria's prettiest village. If you have enough time, you can easily combine your stay in Vienna with a day trip to Hallstatt. This is Hotel Sacher. We are going to Café Sacher to eat the famous Sacher Torte. Sacher Torte originally has been founded here. We are standing in front of Café Sacher because we are going to taste Sacher Torte. And there is a line because it's very popular. So people are waiting in line now to get Sacher Torte. I take the original Sacre Torte with whipped cream, a specialty of course of this place. The Wiener Melange and Maria Theresia yeah, coffee. Hello there. Maria Theresia yeah, coffee. Schön. Dankeschön. Yeah, now we have our famous 
Sarah Kortzer and I'm going to drink that with my Wiener Melange Café. I'm not a coffee drinker, but this coffee really tastes good. And you see the whipped cream and it has milk, a very creamy taste. And I'm still going to put some sugar in it, but without sugar it's already good. The chocolate, a nice deep chocolate taste, not too sweet but sweet enough. The Sacha Torte is really delicious. It has a rich taste. It's a creamy cake. It's not spicy but rich in taste. And there's also something sour in it. It reminds me of cherries. I'm not sure if that's in it. And I love the chocolate. As a chocolate lover, I love it. The whipped cream is not sweet at all, but if you combine it with the Sacha Torte, it tastes really good because the torta is also not too sweet but it has a sweetness. It's a very good combination. Inside was not the sherry but it was the peach marmalade. Marile, that's inside the Sacher Torte. This is the Secession. In this museum is the famous work of Gustav Klimt. The Secession was the name of an art movement led by Gustav Klimt, who left the conservative Kunsthaus and founded a new society called the Secession with a style closely associated with Jugendstil, the Austrian variant of Art Nouveau. The Secession building was the place where the artists of the Secession movement gathered, designed in 1898 by the architect Joseph Maria Olbrich. The Golden Dome is an eye-catcher made of 2,500 gilded bay leaves and 300 bay berries. We are here at the famous Lushmark of Vienna with a lot of places where you can eat. So we are going to choose something and Delicious here, let's go. The Nashmarkt is Vienna's most popular and liveliest market in the center of Vienna with a history that goes back to the 16th century. There are over a hundred stalls selling a variety of goods including fruits and vegetables, fresh bread and cheese and many other different culinary food stalls. The Nashmarkt is also home to a number of great food restaurants and cafes. Not only will the Nashmarkt make you hungry, it's also a great place to soak up the culture and atmosphere of Vienna. If you want to have fun, go to the Volksprater. Prater is a huge amusement park and the entrance is free, but if you want to do an attraction, then you have to pay for it. Prater, also known as Volksprater or Wurstelprater, literally Clowns Prater, opened in 1895 and is one of the oldest amusement parks in the world, with many of the original attractions perfectly preserved, adding to the park's charming historic feel. The original giant Wiener Riesenrad Ferris Wheel was opened to the public in 1897 to celebrate the golden jubilee of Emperor Franz Joseph I. First rain. With merry-go-rounds, roller coasters and over 250 attractions, there's plenty of fun and excitement at the Prater for young and old alike. Shaolin Culture Week The Shaolin Temple in Vienna offers an intensive week every year with daily Kung Fu, Tai Chi and Qigong training. Our journey came to an end. I'm standing here at the night jet, 14 hour trip. I hope you enjoyed the journey and see you on our next trip. Bye bye!